unfortunately these amendments are unnecessary and they're excessive and give the police a range of powers that are likely to be, to be misused. The police already have power to stop a person in the case of trespass, threat to property and a whole range of other scenarios. There's no need for the police to have additional powers which now because of their vague nature actually mean that there's more chance for people's fundamental human right to protest and express their views to be threatened. I think one of the real concerns is how vague some of these powers are. So not only does it make it harder for people to know where they stand, which I think is a really important part of a functioning democracy, is that you know how the law should work in any given situation. But it means that, for instance, in a protest situation, the police can move in and if they suspect anyone of committing an offence in the past 12 hours, um, they can issue you with a direction to move you on. Now, the problem is that offence doesn't have to be connected with the protest, so they can suspect you of jaywalking, they can suspect you of not having a valid tram ticket, and in this whole range of potential situations, um, all of which, as you can see, is very broad, um, we've, we've got the, the police having powers to now move you on and subject you to a $700 fine for failing to comply. And then ultimately, if, if you're subject to, to multiple move-on directions and you fail to comply, uh, the police can go to the court and apply for an exclusion order. And breach of that exclusion order um, can result in up to two years prison. So these are hugely draconian and very disturbing powers and penalties that we have for situations which impact on people's ability to freely express their views. This isn't just general speech, which obviously is important. You know, it's important to be able to go, sh go shopping or go and catch a tram somewhere and go to the footy, but human rights law recognises that political speech, political expression is even more highly protected and we've got these laws that just drive a truck through those protections. It's really very concerning. No, I mean, the, the laws used to have a specific protection and exemption from the move on powers for political forms of expression and protest. So the law used to recognise the importance of political speech and political um, forms of expression and gathering together in groups. But that specific exemption has been removed. So whereas our laws used to strike a balance between the competing rights and recognising the special place that political speech has in our de democratic framework, um, the ba we've now got laws that go far too far in the other direction and don't adequately respect human rights. So it's very concerning that we have an Attorney General that says that these laws are justified. The case simply hasn't been made, according so no to us. no safeguards? Well, we used to have a specific safeguard and that's been removed. So um, combined with the fact that we don't think these laws are actually necessary, the government hasn't made the case. I think the whole package is very, very concerning. Well. I mean, I think it's really for the Victorian government to explain how these amendments are justified in a society that we hope to keep as free and democratic. But it seems to be perceived concern over um, whether it's the, the um, picketing of construction sites by unionists or the east-west link um, political activity and protest activity over the, those particular construction sites. Um, there's certainly, perhaps in some quarters, a perception that our laws don't go far enough. But there's this lack of understanding, there's a disconnect between what the government says the law is and what it actually is. We already have um, laws that enable police to move in and move people on if there's a breach of peace that's threatened or if there's a threat to property. So we don't need these additional powers and these additional threats to our fundamental human rights. I think we can certainly say there's a growing creep in Australia towards threats to democratic freedoms. So 
you only have to look at the G20 legislation passed in Queensland that has a whole range of disturbing effects in terms of restricting the movement and ability to peacefully assemble, peacefully assemble and protest um, the G20 forums that are being held in Queensland. And then in Tasmania we've got even worse laws I think than these move on powers laws which um, will make types of protest criminal. Um, so there's some really disturbing trends in Australia as well as the silencing of NGOs. So we've seen the government, governments, state governments and the federal government place further restrictions on the ability for community legal centres, for example, to advocate uh, and actually get involved in the political process of law reform and lobbying and policy reform. So these are really disturbing trends in Australia and it's happening all across the world. I think the Special Rapporteur on Freedom of Assembly and Association has commented on the shrinking civil society space and um, governments all around the world are actually contributing to this shrinkage, whether it's through um, clamping down on protests in, the, in a similar way to Australia or worse, using violence and um, really heavy measures that aren't justified or through restricting funding and generally um, quashing political activity that they, they don't personally agree with. So there are some really disturbing trends.